What's good? I'm back with another video breakdown. We're gonna be taking a look at in at least choppers do it again video. Some pretty simple effects. We're gonna break it down real quick. For the demonstration of this video, I'm gonna use the same footage I use in my editing workflow. Make sure you check that video out. I'll leave a notation in the thing up here. If you would please make sure you hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Have the content get spread around. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's get straight into the video. The first thing we start off with some light work. I got my subject already rotoscoped out and I duplicated that clip. So the top layer is my subject rotoscoped out. And it's the same thing for the second layer, I just desaturated it. When you have multiple clips stacked up like this, and you wanna go into Fusion, you can right click and hit Open Fusion, but I actually key bind it to Y using the keyboard customization. So if I highlight this and hit Y on my keyboard, go into Fusion, all I did was take a color correcting node, actually I'm gonna remove it, took a color correcting node, add it to the, the flow, and went over here in saturation and just dropped it down. Then I'm gonna go back into my first clip, I'm gonna hit D to re-enable, hit Y on the keyboard, I got a DVE node. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna show you how I did it. No D, DVE. I'm gonna add it to the node tree. And all I did was keyframe. So I'm gonna go over here. Now the DVE node is pretty much like a transform node, but you can actually move in Z space and, and uh, manipulate the rotation in Z space as well. It kind of gives you like a 3D effect. So I'm in the first frame, I'm gonna go into Spectre tab and click the keyframe on Z move. I'm gonna leave it where it is. I'm gonna go to frame 35, and actually I'm gonna take this and just move it down. When you play it back, they just have your subject move in the Z space. Now the actual video, NLE actually, he doesn't go straight forward, he actually kinda goes on the angle. So to do that, just go over to the pivot. So basically just go in here where it says pivot on pivot X, you can move it to the left, and you'll see he actually moving over that way. So he actually will start off in the center and he will move over to the left. Actually it's a little bit too far, but you get the idea. You don't work in Fusion. I have all my clips all in one in the node tree. This time I'm actually working in layers. So I did my effect on the top layer. I made I desaturate the second layer and the bottom layer is just the background. Working in Fusion can be kind of confusing, especially with all the different nodes and the big elaborate node trees. So if you take it layer by layer, I think that might actually make it a little more easier to comprehend. Now this next effect, I get the same setup. It's the same thing, but I actually applied my effects to this. I'm gonna hit Y on the keyboard, go into Fusion. And you see here, I actually got two transform nodes. And these are just basic keyframing. And so I'm gonna remove the transform nodes and show you exactly how I did it. I'm gonna click medium one, bring in another transform node. I'm going to the first frame. I'm gonna go over here to the angle on the inspector tab, hit the keyframe. I'm gonna set it at zero for now. And then I'm gonna go to pop by frame 28 and rotate it. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this way. And then I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go about here. Rotate the other way. And then I go to the end of the frame and I hit this little mark here to actually reset it. Now you notice in doing the rotation, it looks awkward because it's actually moving on the center axis. So we go over here to the anchor point on Y and I'm gonna move it down. And then basically I have it rotate on the bottom axis versus in the center. Now I'm gonna create an instance node. So go over here and click my transform two. I'm gonna hit control C on the keyboard. Then I'm gonna hit media dash one, which is actually just the same media, just copied. And then I'm gonna hit control shift and V. That's gonna paste the instance. Now you notice here, if you move it around, you get this little green line here. Effectively what an instance is, is the exact copy of the previous node. So it's the exact copy of this transform node. If I do anything, anything I change in this first transform node will affect the second one. The instance transform is gonna affect this clip here, the media one dash one, which is a copy of the original clip. And all I'm gonna do is on this, instance you're gonna go in here and use everything in here that's green is everything is affected by the original transform node in order to get the subject where i got two copies moving back and forward i'm gonna go in here to tra invert transform i'm gonna right click and go down to d instance now what this is gonna do is they're gonna unlock it from the original transform node go into the instance check that and now when i play it back i have two subjects i'm going to the spline editor i'm gonna bring this out now, if you've been rocking with me for a minute, you know I would say go into the spline there to highlight your, your, your spline and hit S to smooth. We're well, just gonna do a little bit different. So you actually, you can go up here and you can hit ease and you have the actually preset curves. I'm actually leaving a link in the description for different animation curves. Yeah, keep it in and out. And basically that will kind of curve and give you a little easing, but also you can hit T on your keyboard. And say for instance, you go in here and highlight this node or highlight this, this point here. You can actually, oh, go back, click. You can pull this to ease it and give it a little more of a curve, or you can actually go, in, if you have a preset number that you wanna type in, you can just highlight that, go in here and just type in the number. 
that will add a lot of smoothness to your animation. Now, of course, once you got everything animated, you add the sauce on there, motion blur. You go into your settings, motion blur. I usually crank it up to 10. And once again, since this is the instance node, now even though I'm working in the, the, the secondary node, which you can tell by everything being green, it's still gonna affect the original node as well. The only thing that would not change or is not affected is the inverted transform due to the fact we right click and de-instance it. Now you also can re-instance and they'll link them back together and then they'll affect one another then, but that's not what we're looking for right now. <laughs> the next effect is actually a transition. I use adjustment clips to achieve this. The first two clips is actually one clip that I'm transitioning from. I just split it so it'd be easier to mark where it, uh, where the transition to begin. Right, I'm gonna go about right here. I'm gonna split the adjustment clip and I'm gonna delete the rest. I'm gonna click on the adjustment clip, hit Y. Like I said, Y is my keyboard shortcut to take me into Fusion. And then I'm just gonna grab a transform node. So I'm gonna click here, got a transform node. In the first frame of the transform node, I'm going to hit the keyframe on the angle. And then I'm going to go to the end here. And I'm going to double click and type in 360. If you play it back, you know it's a problem. You actually can see the background here. To adjust that, you want to basically go over here to says edges and change it to mirror. Let's go mirror that. Now, you also got another problem. You see this big black line or this transparent line here. We're going to fix that in a second. I'm going to settings, hit motion blur, turn it up to 10. So now we're going to go into the spline editor. We go down here and select all, right click, go to ease and go ease out. I'm gonna go back into my effects and get another adjustment clip. I want this just to cover this back end. It's basically the second clip here. Go here, I'm gonna split this, delete that. I'm gonna click on that and open infusion. And all I'm gonna do with this and grab a color corrector and then just drop down the saturation. And then with this last adjustment clip, I cut it right before the desaturation occurs on the second clip. So I'm gonna go over here and open this up in Fusion. I'm gonna grab another transform node. Go to the first frame on the angle. I'm gonna select the keyframe. Go to the last frame. Once again, type in 360. Go into the spline. Select. Zoom to fit. I'm gonna select all. Right click. I'm going to ease. Ease out. I'm going to settings. Motion blur. Crank it up. Controls and on the canvas. I'm trying to the mirrors and then go back into the edit page. And so you play it back, it rotates, and you see at the end, because we add that easing into it, how it eases into, and how it eases into the background of my subject. And last thing we gotta address is the black bars. You don't want them showing up and get zoomed. It kind of throws the effect off. And what you wanna do, you wanna select all your clips with the exception of the adjustment clips. So you hold control, you can unselect those, then go up here to the Spectre tab and zoom in just enough to get rid of the lines. Another quick tip I wanna throw in real quick, say for instance, you zoom in, on this clip, to a certain extent, you add a couple of effects, maybe like a, a camera shakers, things like that. And you control C on the clip with the effects on it that you want to copy over. Select your next uh, clip, hit Alt V, you'll get this little pop up window here. And then you just select if you add is it a zoom or scale, plug in, fusion effect, whatever it is you want to copy over, just click OK and it'll apply those effects to that next clip. And for this effect to work, you need the object removal, which is on the color page, which is a feature that's only in studio. Funny enough, it's actually the reason why I bought studio. Now to get this effect to work is really finicky because especially if you have motion, if you notice in the original clip, it's not much motion. You can see they pretty much don't move. The little movement they do have is in slow motion. So if you actually zoom and play through the clip, you can see it's not perfect. You see our hair still here and part of our head there or elbow, I don't know what the hell that is. But then it zooms in, zooms out, and then they drop into place. I'm going go through here now. I'm going to the power windows, grab my pen tool, and I'm just mask out my subject. Try to use as little as many, as little as points as possible. It doesn't have to be exactly precise. And then I'm going to the tracker, and then I'm going to track back and forward. If you want more control over the mask and try to make the, the effect look better, you can go in here and change from clip to frame, and then you can actually make adjustments to the mask and it will create keyframes. So you go back here and you wanna bring this in a little closer and kind of curve it around. And these little, not, these little lines here at the bottom, you'll make keyframe those adjustments. Now, once you're done with that, you're gonna go into your face, grab the object removal, drop it on your clip. Go hit show mask. When you click show mask, it'll just show you what you masked out, which you can kind of double check your work. So I'm gonna go here where it says scene analysis. After it's done analyzing the scene, you're gonna go down here to build clean plate. Just give it a second and then hit show clean plate. Well, actually, you can leave that unchecked and then uncheck show mask. That's more or less my clean plate. That's the reason why you don't want to have too much movement 
but once it moves it tracks with it, the subject so you can just a little cluster mess but more or less that's the idea that's why the in the original video effect that's why you had like this blurred outline of the subject so you look at it they wasn't moving and like i said the little moving they were doing was in slow motion my original fact actually came out better because i went through and actually changed the mask from frame to frame try to get it as accurate as possible but like i said you still can see his ear here his head there and then once you get towards the end it becomes distorted towards the bottom you see the little black jacket edges here and basically what i did in order to make the subject fade out that's the first part of it i'm gonna grab a background node take the output connected to the output of the media one and that's effectively gonna put i should move this out the way some more that's so gonna put the, the background in the foreground so i'm gonna hold i'm gonna click on the merge two hit control t that's gonna put the background in the background and then with this merge node i can actually go into the settings and i can drop the blend that's how i animated the the subjects from fading out and to get rid of the, the black background itself you're gonna go into the background node and then go to alpha and drop it down and then i'm going to the merge node make sure i'm in the first frame under blend i'm gonna click click the keyframe here i'm gonna go probably about seven frames in and drop it down and it just animates over time him fading out with the merge two highlight i'm gonna grab a transform node and basically on the keyframe it so with the at frame seven where the blend ends at i'm gonna go in here and click the keyframe here on the center i'm gonna move over one frame and then i'm gonna move actually i'm gonna zoom this out a little bit i'm gonna cut this display off i'm gonna zoom out a little bit i'm just gonna move my subject up to the top then i'm gonna go over probably about three or four frames and then i'm gonna right click set to default when you play it back the subject fades out then it moves up to the top of the frame and then it drops back down of course you can't see the subject so i'm gonna go back to frame seven merge two and with the key i'm gonna leave the keyframe check i'm gonna go over to frame eight and then i'm gonna crank it back up so then my time my subject drops back in he's visible again of course you want to go transform go into the spline editor and hit select all and this here i'm gonna do an ease out therefore when he drops in it's kind of a speed it speeds in and then slows down as it drops in and of course settings motion blur turn it up now for the brightness flash and the little camera shake effect i put an adjustment clip here and i went into the, the effects drop this down go into open effects and just type in camera shake grabbed it dropped it on the adjustment clip then i went into effects over here in the inspector tab and just changed it how i like it and then create the flash i just took the adjustment clip into the fusion page this is actually the node here i use the brightness contrast and move it to the side for the time being hold shift and remove it and click on media one go up here to the toolbar brightness contrast and it's only as you can see here it's only one frame or well, two frames so i'm going to the first frame i'm going to crank the brightness all the way up then I'm coming back down here. Actually, oh, let me hit the keyframe first. Hit the keyframe. I'm going to the next frame. And just a quick flash. 